Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. Well, um, I welcome back. Uh, the reasons are pretty awful, but I'm always uh, glad to have uh, Whitney Webb on the show. Whitney, um, thank you so much for... You uh, emailed me about this interview that you just did with uh, Maria Farmer, who is a Epstein victim, and you have pretty alarming information about all of this. Um, I'll just give an overview and then you can get into the details. Basically, Maria Farmer told you that uh, the mainstream media, and she's been public about being a, a victim of Epstein's, as that the mainstream media has only told us like 5% or so of what, what she actually conveyed to people. So. Um, let's just get into it. You, you did, you had a three hour phone call with her. What, what, what did you uncover? Well, it was a really long ranging conversation. We talked about a whole bunch of things, but to bring up the point on mainstream media, she told the story to every major news organization in the United States. Every time she mentioned Wexner, they cut it out and she called the FBI and told the FBI when she reported them in 1996, she was the first person to report Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, both of them by name to the FBI. In 1996. And she said, in 1996. And the FBI refused to take her evidence because uh, Epstein and Ghislaine had stolen pictures of her younger preteen sisters, when they, of them being like half naked and stuff. And she had their fingerprints on the envelopes and the FBI refused to take it and test it and she still has them and they still won't take it. And who was the head of the FBI in 1996? Do we know or do we have? Oh, I'd have to look it up. Um, I mean, by 2001, it was Robert Mueller and all of this stuff was still going on, but I don't know when he started. So I'm not a hundred percent, but um, the FBI, she said the, she, Maria Farmer said the FBI was just as abusive to her as Epstein and Maxwell. And that is so alarming for many reasons, especially when you consider that this is supposed to be the agency of the government that protects these, you know, <laughs> sex trafficking victims. Um, she told them that she had been trafficked, that her younger sister had been trafficked, um, and that they were grooming her younger sister to have Epstein's kids be one of these, you know, like girls at, at the Zorro Ranch for this like weird experiment, right? This was all going on in the mid nineties. Well, first I just want to interject. Louis J. Free um, was the uh, head of the FBI from September 1st of 1993 to June 25th of 2001. Um, he right. Was, yeah. That, that's relevant. Louis Free was hired by Alan Dershowitz to go and harass one of, uh, I forget which victim of Epstein, but one of them trying to keep them quiet. So um, that tells you a lot about the FBI at the time anyway, but I would argue that it hasn't really changed much since. I have a quick considering. Qu I, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have a quick question here. Is this the same Free who Penn State University hired to do an outside investigation of Sandusky? I believe so, but I'm not 100%, but it's possible, yeah. That's a weird connection. Definitely. Definitely a disturbing connection. Yeah. And so gee, anyway, who, I just want to point, before we get in, I'm sorry to keep interrupting you, but I just want to paint a picture mm -hmm. for the audience here, just, just so as we get, get wider and wider on this. 93 to 2001, that was during Bill Clinton, who... Flight logs indicate we're on Epstein's plane 26 times, his wife two times, and they were numerous times at his compound in um, New Mexico. Jolene Maxwell was at their daughter Chelsea's wedding. So let's just put that context into this timeline. So continue. Right. So all of what you just mentioned with the Clinton-Epstein relationship, that's after the year 2000. Maria Farmer told me that she saw... Uh, Bill Clinton as president coming and going that Ghislaine would, this is in 1995, that Ghislaine Maxwell would, uh, was running around screaming, the president's coming, and that they were doing all this preparations, preparing all this food. Everyone had to leave except for all these girls. She was the last employee to leave, Maria Farmer. Okay. And when she told the FBI in 1996, she said the Clintons are part of this. She also said Donald Trump is part of it. And she, one of the reasons she said that is because Ivana Trump, she said, was with Ghislaine Maxwell uh, when they when she would go out to recruit girls for Epstein. It was her and Ivana Trump, Trump's ex-wife, 
They would go out together all the time and pick up these 12 year old girls, girls in school uniforms in braces, exchange information with them. And the next day they'd be in Epstein's office. And she saw between five and 10 girls, different girls every day, go into Epstein's office the whole year, like, you know, two years she was there every day. And this is in the 90s, right? So much of what we know from the other victims, this is after the year 2000. The FBI knew this then and they didn't act. And that's why all those other victims exist. That's, it's just disgusting. So this all could have been stopped in the 90s. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you had a sitting president who, according to Maria Farmer, was showing up to Epstein's place while there were girls there. Yeah, that's what she said. We also know, though, you know, for people that say, oh, well, Epstein and Clinton, they didn't meet till he left office. I mean, there is documentation of Epstein going to the White House and meeting with the deputy chief of staff in like 1993. Right. I mean, there, there are definite indications that there were contacts between Epstein and the White House as soon as Clinton was in office. And this former Israeli military official, uh, official that knew Robert Maxwell and worked with him said that the reason they set up that sexual blackmail operation that Epstein was running was because they wanted to compromise Clinton so that he um, would not try and force Israel to make peace with Palestine and that he would take Israel's side. And who was that in the name of that uh, ex-Mossad agent? Uh, Ari Ben Manashi. I, I published an interview, uh, two interviews with him on, on Mint Press News as part of my Epstein series. He's also the guy that said that Epstein and uh, was hired by Robert Maxwell to work on, on behalf of Israeli intelligence in the 1980s, and that Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein had met in the 1980s. And Maria Farmer confirmed this and said they definitely did not meet in 1991 after her father's death. That's the real date of when this operation began in the early 90s. It was starting up then. In 1991? Around there, in 92, because by the time she was there, she said in 1995, they had been doing this for years. One of the, the people, the main procurers of girls that uh, uh, around uh, why she was there was a girl named Claire Hazel, who was, uh, Ghislaine had married off to like this Earl of Guinness in, in England, and now she's like living in this palace. Um, but at the time, she said uh, in 1995, that girl had been there for like at least three years, three or four years. And by 1995. So yeah, definitely way before then. We have been lied to on a massive scale about the timing of so much of this, like when these people met, how long this operation was going on, who really involved, who was really involved. I mean, Maria said she told the FBI, you know, Trump in, in the Clinton, she named Alan Dershowitz as well and to the FBI. And she said, Leslie Wexner is the head of the snake of, of this in the United States. How so? That he he's... He's the head guy. He th that he was the guy coordinating all of this stuff behind the scenes. With the re with the recruiting the, the the children and getting the girls because isn't isn't the tactic or wasn't yeah. part of the tactic of like oh we're we're going to make you a big time model right isn't that what they would say to these like 12, 13 year old girls you're going to be a model. Well, she so Maria was working as like an employee doing like interior decorating and stuff. She was an art student at the New York Academy of Art and was basically forced by the dean of that school to work for Epstein. And she didn't realize that there was pedophilia going on, but she thought it was weird that like all these preteen girls were there. And what Ghislaine would tell her is that, oh, I'm recruiting them for for to be models. But of course, she later found out as time went on that there was something seriously very wrong here. And then she realized what was really happening. But this was like early on. So go into from this. what I understand sort of the scope of what the mainstream media has been telling us about Epstein. Like they were sort of forced to tell us stuff about him this summer <laughs> and with show us like what they've been telling us and what the reality is. Um, wow. Uh, there is just so much there. I can give you some examples. So I learned about Maria Farmer's story from a New York Times article and it claimed that um, she had gone to paint a mural at Wexner's mansion in Ohio and that Epstein had sexually assaulted her and she called the FBI. That does not even come close at all to what really happened. She was working for Epstein and Ghislaine. They said, you have to go over and live in the guest house at the Wexner's. Abigail Wexner, Leslie Wexner's wife, wants an artist in residence. Okay. She goes over there to live. They don't let her eat, get out to eat. She has to call and ask permission to get outside. There's all these cameras, like all these cameras that were in all these Epstein residences. It was full of cameras. They were watching her constantly. They wouldn't let they they would give her very limited amounts of food. She she felt like she was being like starved by these people. 
I mean, this is insane, right? And then uh, Maxwell and uh, Epstein would come and visit about like once a month. She was there for three months total. Um, so they were there like three or four times, she said. And the last time they came, they tried Maxwell and Epstein both tried to rape her. And she fought it off and then started calling all these people saying, get me out of here, all these people she knew, her family. And then this bodyguard that introduced himself previously to her as Leslie Wexner's right-hand man, former special forces, who was now a bodyguard for Will Smith, came and basically said, you're never leaving this, this estate. And, and he, he, she thought she was going to die. She said that guy had been sent there to kill her. And the only reason she didn't die is because she called all these people and raised this huge stink. And because they had seen it with all these cameras, they let her go because too many people knew. And she, But she was an adult at the time. She told me, what if I had been one of those preteen girls? What would have happened to me? <clears throat> and, the, and the New York Times describes this as Epstein assaulted her and then she called the FBI and everything was fine. They would not let her leave there. She was like trapped there in that house for like 12 hours with some crazy giant ex-special forces guy trying to like kill her. <laughs> I mean, this is madness. Um, so what else? I know um, you, she uncovered stuff about... Um, uh, about Vicki Ward, who is supposedly like, oh, the big van, she broke the story on Vanity Fair and all this stuff like that back in, I think it was 2002 or three or something. Walk us through that, Vic, the, the truth about Vicki Ward and that timeline. Okay, so um, Maria Farmer uh, gave her story, she talked to Vicki Ward when they were doing, Vanity Fair was doing this, this story about Epstein, which I, I believe is the one that eventually came. This article of hers called The Talented Mr. Epstein. A lot of what Maria Farmer said she told Vicki didn't end up being in there. But um, Vicki Ward had promised um, Maria and her younger sister, who was also a victim of all of this, uh, Annie Farmer, had, public, had promised uh, to protect them. And she ended up after her, you know, um, she apparently is a total careerist. And uh, Maria said that described her as a monster, said Vicki Ward is a monster and said that she had harassed her family, um, that she would call her mom and, and make her family cry and that she went to Ghislaine Maxwell. There's pictures of Vicki Ward and Ghislaine Maxwell. If you look them up, you will find them. Um, apparently, after learning everything about Ghislaine Maxwell had done to these girls and not including it in the story, cozied up to these people. And then Vicki Ward told Ghislaine Maxwell over drinks that it was Maria Farmer that had told the FBI about Ghislaine Maxwell and essentially uh, put her source, whose life, whose story and secrets, you know, in stories she had promised to protect told the most dangerous, per one of the most dangerous people in the world, Maria Farmer described Ghislaine Maxwell to me as one of the world's most dangerous criminals in the world, right? And, and Vicki Ward tells this woman that Maria Farmer is the person that called the FBI, putting her directly, I mean, you think Ghislaine Maxwell wouldn't like seek revenge? This woman, because of that, has had to live in these rural communities all around the country, moving around for years and hiding. And Vicki Ward is going out and getting like awards and stuff and like being applauded as like a great reporter. And this is what she did to her source that helped her get that big story. Wow. And what year was this? Um, the exact year she didn't tell me when uh, this happened, but the I believe the the column, this Mr. Uh, the talented Mr. Epstein, it came out in 2003. 2003, before the 2009 uh, uh you know, pedophile charge where, uh, you know, Acosta gave him the, yeah. the sweetheart deal. Right. Before then. This was all before. There were so many people in mainstream media that knew this story the whole time. And the FBI knew the whole time. Um, and they, they didn't do anything. And, and it wasn't just, um, they didn't just do this with Maria Farmer. They did this with other people that tried to come forward and tell their whole story. Uh, um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, uh, at a loss for this. Um, I mean, I guess in, in covering the Epstein stuff, um, and you've done a, an amazing job of it. And, and what I've done of it is you, you, you do see, 
I mean, in one sense, this is alarming, but in the other sense, it, it, it makes sense because there's no way for a global multi-billion dollar pedophile sex trafficking ring to exist. It's not just a handful of creepy guys. There's no way for this multi-billion dollar thing to exist without the most powerful people. And we know it's Bill Clinton, it's Trump, it's uh, the Clintons, it's Les Wexner, it's these billionaires, and it's people like Jalene Maxwell who are just pure evil, who there was an article in the Jerusalem Post yeah. back in January saying she's probably hiding out in Israel. Um, That's not what Maria Farmer said. Really? Maria Farmer uh, thinks it's something else. Yeah, she thinks, um, based on what Ghislaine Maxwell told her, she said that even though they were Israeli intelligence and Ghislaine Maxwell showed her her Israeli passport, Epstein also had an Israeli passport. Ghislaine also had like five different passports, said she was a citizen in like five different countries, all thanks to her dad and how important he was. Um, she told me that she knows, she says, this is what she says. She says she knows for a fact who's hiding Ghislaine and that it's the Rothschild family. She said that because the death threats that she is still getting, um, the, or, or that she's getting right now are from Lynn Forrester to Rothschild, who's also a friend of the Clintons, by the way, that she's getting it from this woman and uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, because she was around her all the time, because Ghislaine Maxwell apparently doesn't actually have friends. She treats her servants. You know, she makes them look through photo albums with her and like they, she takes them shopping and she tells them about all this stuff because she doesn't actually have like real friends, apparently. You know, I mean, if you're that crazy of a psychopath, uh, you know, it kind of makes sense. But anyway, uh, she told Maria all this stuff about her family, about her father. And she said um, the greatest guardians and protectors of, of, of our family, the Maxwell family, are the Rothschilds. That's what she said. And when she, she said, said that's who's hiding Ghislaine and mm -hmm. that she's in the United Kingdom. That's what she thinks. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense because the uh, they've there was a, a, back in February, I believe, they were talking about, well, we, we've we reached out to Prince Andrew, we want to question him, and Prince Andrew just has said absolutely nothing, He doesn't, and he's not even worried about being apprehended. And of course, because it's Trump's White House, uh, right. and it's William Barr, uh, who's another pedophile protector. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it just, it, I, and I, I like bringing this up on, for several reasons. Just to be, first of all, any QAnon people listening, fucking Trump is evil, shut the fuck up that he's some kind of secret uh, hidden hero. He's a fucking pedophile rapist, just like the fucking Clintons, and, and go fuck yourself on Joe Biden. Sorry, that's my little commentary on that. Um, so uh, pull your head out of your fucking QAnon ass. Trump is a goddamn pedophile who's covering this shit up, just like the Clintons have done. They're all pieces of shit. The ruling class is, is our vile yep. pieces of shit. And uh, I don't advocate for any violence of any kind, but if I had a bunch of diseased rats in my home, I wouldn't feel bad about having them exterminated. I'll just say that. Um, but... Because this fills me with rage. This just fills me with just absolute rage. Um, yeah. Okay. Th there's no other way to feel about it. I talked to this lady for three and a half hours. I just like could not do anything the rest of the day. I thought I had really gotten really deep in, in this darkness when I wrote, you know, all these articles. I wrote this whole series about Epstein. I thought I had really gotten like, you know, I, I knew how bad it was. I didn't. I didn't. So we know after talking to this woman, it is just like I I cannot believe that these people because we need to go back to the fact too that what like just two days ago uh, this Florida court ruled that the sweetheart deal stands that no one can ever sue Ghislaine Maxwell or Leslie Wexner or indict them for their crimes. And Epstein was just a project manager. Yeah. He was just a project manager. The real brains behind this, according to Maria Farmer, was Wexner and Ghislaine Maxwell, she knew for a fact, answered directly to Wexner, and that's where all the money for all of this came from. It all came from Wexner. Oh, that's yeah. That's what she said. Epstein was middle management. I mean, that's why right. when they denied his bail, I was like, oh, they're going to kill him in prison. Like, he's 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 a mid-level mob guy that got busted, and they're just going to clean that up. I mean... Did she think he died in prison or do you, do you think they like extracted him, the CIA or Mossad extracted him out of there? She didn't opine about either of that, but she said there's no way he committed suicide. <laughs> she says, absolutely not. Yeah. He did, he was, she knew him really well, she said, and that knowing who he was, he, he never would have committed suicide ever. Everyone agrees on that. Whether he was I know. murdered by somebody <laughs> so, else or, or they extracted him, there's no, no one, no one agrees that he, he committed suicide.
Um, unless you believe that a paper t-shirt can hang somebody in a cell on a suicide watch. But, and if you watch the video from it, oh, that video just happened to disappear. What a weird, wacky coincidence. Um, and the only two people charged thus far are the guards. <laughs> so I, yeah, I, I, it's sick. Um, what other like really startling information, especially as you said, like you thought you knew everything about this case until this phone call, what other startling information came out there? Obviously there's the timeline that the FBI has known about this since 1996, um, and has done nothing. Um, right. what, what other information did you get from this conversation with, with Maria Farmer that, that blew you well, away or, or contra or showed the, the, the gaping lies that we've all been told? I mean, um, I kind of wish I could just play the recording. She authorized me to, but I didn't have it. I don't have the clip ready. Um, yeah, let me tell this to the audience. It, it got... where, I'm sorry to interrupt, but, but yes, um, I wanted to tell the audience. So uh, Whitney and I were talking about, we were trying to work out the technology to show, to listen to some of this, these clips that Maria authorized to play. Um, Whitney is going to cut them up for me, um, whatever's safe to, for, to play. And I will do a separate video breaking down those, those aspects of the phone call. Um, just so we can get into the specifics of that. So, but anyway, um, um, I, I just want to let my audience know that there will be another a follow up video to this, but um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Right. So, um, this is probably the hardest to talk about. Um, but basically, what she said is that she thinks a lot of these kids, specifically the ones that were in Florida, um, that a lot of them were killed. And she says that because she knew for a fact that it was ten, like probably tens of thousands of kids over the lifetime of this operation. And she says only 30 people have come forward and that doesn't make any sense to her. And she says that the legal team knows for a fact that there are 500 girls in Florida. They know their names, they know they were victims and they can't find any of them. 500 and that people have told her, oh, well, maybe they're prostitutes or drug dealers. And she says it doesn't make any sense because if they were that, they'd, they'd try and get a settlement. They try and get money, you know, well, and they're nowhere to be record. found. They'd have something. They'd have a petty theft criminal record. They'd have. No one can find them. And she also told me that when she was at the Florida homes, she saw really young children. This was not just preteens. She saw really young children there. And this is something that she said she's told to every mainstream media outlet and they will not report. And I think the reason for that is because if you listen to people like what Epstein said about himself trying to excuse his sex crimes and what people like Alan Dershowitz have tried to run interference for is that, you know, they try and say, oh, well, in some countries, the age of consent is lower. And if they're preteens or if they have their period, it's OK. Right. And, and just, like Alan Dershowitz, like a whole op ed at one point arguing this, but if it becomes, if they report that there were kids way younger than preteens there, that whole thing falls apart. That whole excuse falls apart. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, she was 17 or 16 and a half or all that nonsense. It's just like, that's, that's still a child by the way. But yeah, then it's, 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 if they report the reality on this, because the, and this is the thing I, I, I said over the summer, they want to try, because what they always do with these stories is Oh, like, it's like the, the bad apple cop story. Like, oh, he just, it's, it's like Sandusky was just one bad guy or this one priest. And it's like, no, because the reality is, and you and I know this, and you knew this before this interview, but this interview just, you know, seals the deal on it, is that it's a global thing. That's why I asked at the top of this interview, wait, is this the same free that did the Penn State? Because that, the thing when I, when I interviewed um, my friend, uh, uh, Eric Goldberg was a former child crimes investigator. When I interviewed him over the summer about the Epstein stuff, and I remember one of the things, he was still a cop when the Penn State thing happened. And he goes, oh, Graham, this is, I bet you they're going to find out that he was, that Sandusky was getting kids for alumni. And, um, that's why Sandusky was charged in like 98 or something like that. And it got, it got swept under the rug, Sandusky. And that's what my, who's a child, he's like, it's always, put, there's always a bigger ring involved. And he reiterated that point when I interviewed him over the summer. And that's what this is uncovering. And that to me, at least what you're saying is why they want to just like, oh, Epstein was the one bad guy and oh, he hung himself. 
We got him. Yeah, it's, it's, that's it's definitely over. what they're trying to do. And they're trying to have us argue about how did he actually die, right? Was it suicide, murder, did something else happen, whatever, while everyone, you know, just gives up about looking for Ghislaine Maxwell or, you know, holding Leslie Wexner to account. But what you mentioned about it being global, that is definitely true. Um, another thing Maria told me is that all of these... Um, residences they all had maids from either thailand or the philippines and that they were the nicest people um they were so nice to her and she said um one day she asked them how long have you worked here and they looked at her in the eye and they told her we were stolen <sighs> stolen i mean uh i don't i don't really want to read too much into that you know like um were they kidnapped? I mean, I guess that's sort of what that implies. I mean, they were definitely trafficked. That's for sure. Um, one thing she did tell me too, though, is that um, almost all trafficking, uh, you know, kid, uh, human trafficking that takes place in the United States, at some point it passes through Columbus, Ohio. And that's where Wexner um, set up that airport with that CIA airline, Southern Air Transport. Him and Epstein moved that over in 1995 why all of this stuff was going on, why she was there and seeing all of this. So for people to say that this started in 1995, no way. This was going on before then, right? And I mean, the CIA airline, you know, these guys were working with Israeli intelligence. Uh, it, it's just, um, I, I refuse to believe these people are untouchable. I refuse to believe they're untouchable. People just have to get mad enough. If this does not outrage you that these people are walking free, why like kids are, you know, getting arrested for selling candies on subways and people are, you know, people get murdered for selling loose cigarettes by the cops, on, you know, and, and, and this sort of stuff happens. And, and these are the type of crimes that people can get away with. They can get away with anything. This is what that message sends about this ruling is that if you get involved with organized crime, or the right intelligence agency, you can murder kids, you can rape them, and you can traffic tens of thousands of them and nothing will happen to you. And well, I refuse to believe that, that that's how people are okay with that. I refuse to believe that. I, I, uh, I agree wholeheartedly. That's what this is. This is a, it's like when that photo surfaced of Jeline Maxwell reading that CI book at an In-N-Out Burger. That was a shut your mouth, I'm free, there's nothing you can do about it. And the fact that Epstein didn't kill himself, that's another bold face like, what are you gonna do about it? It's like the, 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 the forensic report on Gary Webb. Oh, he shot himself in the head twice. That's, that's, that's mob style intimidation. That's just like, boy, it'd be a real shame if you fell down uh, and hit yourself, hit yourself in the head with a you know, bag full of hammers. That'd be a real, that's, 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 that's just, a, that's a hey regular person, keep your mouth shut. Don't ask any questions. And then here's another, that's why there's always a new distract. Oh, impeachment and, and now Corona, whatever the thing is to keep us all, and not that the coronavirus isn't serious, but like, guess what we're not talking about? We're not talking about Epstein. We're not talking about where the fuck is Jalene Maxwell. We're not talking about any of this crap. We're always distracted by some new thing. And I, I, I agree with you. And I refuse to accept that these people are untouchable. They want to scare you into thinking that they are. Um, but there's more of us than there are of them. I mean, it's absolutely. And, and these women like Maria, I mean, they, they lived literal horror movies and knew that these people were some of the most powerful people in the world and they still speak up and they've been begging reporters and mainstream media to tell their stories. And they're not doing it. But these women are so incredible and so brave. I mean, I just want people to realize what these women have been through and what they've been trying to tell people. And mainstream media will not listen because they're careerist hacks and they're cowards. And all they care about is money. Yeah. No, these Just women... like that's what Vicki Ward said. Vicki Ward told the victim's lawyer, I am a kept woman. You know, I know what I did to Maria was horrible, was, was bad, but I am a kept woman. I have a certain standard of living stuff like this. This is what she was selling, telling the victim's lawyers. At least, you know, if, if people think they can't do anything to bring in Ghislaine Maxwell, you can hold Vicki Ward's feet to the fire yeah. for what she did. The fact that an Epstein victim that trusted her calls her a monster. Why has no one reported on that? Where's the accountability for Vicki Ward? Yeah. Who, I after learning everything that Ghislaine Maxwell did, that she was raping kids, goes and cozies up with her and outs the, the girl that was brave, to, brave enough to go to the FBI, 
you know, and try and protect other kids outs her so she can climb up the success ladder and get a bunch of money. And then she ends up living for years with a close billionaire pal of Leslie Wexner's. That's who Disgusting. Vicky would live with. Yeah. She couldn't remember the name. Um, I'll send you the audio clip of that so you can play it for people um, for sure. But yeah, she she said she'd get me the name here, but it was one of the uh, some billionaire he was really close to. She went and lived with him in total luxury. And this is the woman that's being held up on like a pedestal as like, you know, one of the brave reporters that tried to go after Epstein. And th this is what the victims are saying about her. And I wonder why no one else in mainstream media bothered to report on this. I guess she really is, she really does think she's a kept woman. Maria told me that Vicki Ward sees herself as part of the elite. Who learns about these type of crimes they're doing and wants to be a part of that? Screw that. Well, I want to, I want to, I want to show so the, 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 the reason why Vicki Ward's been on, you know, Stephen Colbert and all this stuff. And I want to show this, I, I, I've, sh I've shown this graphic uh, before, but it really relates to what we're talking about. And I, and I, I, on this show, I try to make a point of letting people, uh, of telling people that like, um, everything is connected. So I'm going to put this up there. Um, this is the propaganda multiplier. So this is the White House, the CIA, which we've been talking about, and the Pentagon, and they feed their information to the global news agents, AP, AFP, Reuters, and then all that gets filtered down. You see down here, USA Today, Fox, CNN, NBC, you think they're all so different. Oh, they're, no, they're just all, and what the thing I would always add to this, I, I, I didn't make this, but what I would add to this is big time show business, like the agencies like CAA um, and UTA, because CAA, represents, uh, the head of CAA represents Joe Biden. It represents Alyssa Milano. It represents Anderson Cooper. And that's why, um, that's why Vicki Ward is then, they can kind of trot her out and, oh, look at the big hero. And that's all show. That's all more of the, the professional wrestling show because it's like with the, um, the, and, 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 and um, I, like, Time's up, the time's up movement, why they won't hold Joe Biden accountable because the time's up meetings would happen in CAA, uh, in the CAA building. And, and that's why it's like, believe all women unless it's uh, Joe Biden or Bill Clinton. Well, they have, they have strong ties to Epstein. So we're not gonna, we're, that's, that's, what, that's what this is all, this all is connected. And you see, again, going back to this, that the CIA and the State Department gets all of this done, and, and I always say it, it adds into show business, and, 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 and Hollywood is a part of this propaganda. It's why um, ABC had an interview with Virginia Roberts several years ago that the, the woman was told, that the journalist was told to kill it because they didn't want to lose access to the royal family, where you just told us it's the Rothschilds, the royal family, that are threatening Maria Farmer and probably hiding uh, and protecting Jalene Maxwell. Well, well, really quick, the Rothschilds aren't the royal family. Uh, that's the Windsors or like, okay. you know, the, the royal family. But the Rothschilds are like probably, I would say, the most powerful oligarchs in England. Um, so, I mean, there's definitely some overlap there. Um, something that Maria did say about, um, about Ghislaine Maxwell is that Ghislaine Maxwell had like 12 photo albums of all of her pictures growing up with the royal family, like as teenagers and stuff. I mean, she knew Prince Andrew a long, long time ago. And, and, and this woman saw all these photographs. She said like 12 photo albums. And she was talking about how important her father was, Robert Maxwell was, and he had all this access that she had relics uh, that he had he was allowed to take from the British Museum. And like, she was like holding on to them and all this stuff. Like, I mean, just really, insane but anyway the, the royal family thing i mean it has just um you know apparently that's why abc didn't report on this but i wouldn't you know doubt for a fact that they've threatened people sure of course well it's, yeah as you said maria farmer said she's been there's, there's no way they haven't threatened people like you say that they're willing to rape and sell children and and as maria told you the 500 names that have just disappeared they're willing to kill, they, they, won't, they don't, threatening and killing somebody, they don't care at all. I mean, and if they're Yeah, this now, after she told me that, I, I really wonder about this thing that happened before Epstein was arrested. He ordered the cement mixer to his island. He like plugged, he put a bunch of cement everywhere. He plugged a bunch of stuff with cement, you know? 
and like that island so isolated it, it's sort of similar to how she described wexner's estate she said you'd have to run for like six miles they had dobermans they had this giant special forces guy um you know i mean she was like they made it really clear they'll you know they'll find you yeah that's like you bit... can't leave and that's the thing like uh yeah i did just did a video that i'm going to be releasing soon about bill gates's ties uh that you 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 know, you and I have talked about that, and uh, <laughs> it just keeps going. Yeah, but... <laughs> that's another person they knew in the 90s uh, that they talked about around Maria Farmer. They talked about Bill Gates like they knew him really well in 1995. And um, I, I talked about this earlier. Um, there's this report in the Evening Standard. It's a well-known UK newspaper um, from January 2001. It's been totally scrubbed from the internet because it openly talks about how people said that Epstein and Ghislaine had ties to Mossad and the CIA and all this stuff. It talks about the intelligence stuff. That's why it's not there. But it also says that Epstein's money or, uh, had, had come from his business links to three men. And those three men were Leslie Wexner, Donald Trump, and the third one was Bill Gates. And that was in 2001. That's where Bill Epstein Gates never seen me was getting yeah. his money in 2001, Wexner, Trump, and Bill Gates. Yeah, that's what came from uh, this guy, Nigel Rosser, who wrote this for the Evening Standard. He was never sued for libel. No one ever sued him for libel. This was, of course, in 2001, long before Epstein was like controversial people and the public anyway knew what he was up to. The FBI knew. But, you know, this didn't come out till the arrest and you know, the first arrest and all that stuff for, for most people in the public, right? So, it, you know, it wasn't controversial to report on, you know, ties to Epstein. And the New York Times has the gall to say that the earliest known Bill Gates Epstein meeting was in 2011. Oh, yeah. That's complete lie. <coughs> complete lie. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'll try to cut that out. Yes, the, the assumption, <laughs> the thing that, the, the, the flat out lie that Bill Gates just happened to meet the story they're trying to find. Bill Gates just happened to me, you know, Epstein and some business thing and a, a lot of, oh, you know, Stephen Hawking was there and whatever. Like they try to play that angle. It's like, no, they've known each other since the nineties. Um, so, all right, Whitney. Um, uh, <laughs> well, there's a couple things I can, I can bring up really quick that, that were in the phone call. Um, one thing she told me that I hadn't heard anywhere else is that uh, she heard the most disgusting racist remarks out of these people's mouths, specifically about African-Americans. They refused to go anywhere to any city where they thought there would be too many people of African descent. And they said the most disgusting racist things about them that she had ever heard from other people and that they were complete supremacists. They talk about how superior they were, how she was just nothing but a servant because she didn't have like the chosen DNA that they had and they were just like this extreme supremacist stuff and it was just really sickening to hear some of the stuff like she remembers hearing it because you know it, it's it's like verbal abuse it like wears you down you're worthless you're nothing because you're not like us I mean just really um disturbing stuff and you know I just don't know why the mainstream media wouldn't report on this but then you look at someone like Bill Gates who two years ago you know we're talking about his ties to Epstein and in who openly talked like this in private, apparently. And Bill Gates, a couple years ago, said his biggest worry was too many young Africans. Oh, yeah. And now he's talking about the, the best way to control the population is to vaccinate everybody. Yeah. Which is really, really alarming. So uh, what else? Is there anything else that, I mean, I know it's a lot to unpack from this three-hour phone call, but anything else that stands out to you that you, you want to share with us? Um... Let's see. Uh, Ghislaine Maxwell answered directly to Leslie Wexner, and she said that Leslie Wexner was the head in the United States. But she said that the real head of this thing seemed to be the Rothschilds, that this was like, in terms of like who, in terms of people that were like in on this, it was that. And she sort of, I mean, it was sort of a roundabout way that she, she, um, suggested that, but it, it definitely, you know, it, the Rothschilds have a lot of ties to Israel and Israeli intelligence. You know, it was a Rothschild family that, that financed the building of, of the Knesset, which is like the Congress of Israel. Um, the main, what road in Tel Aviv is named after uh, a Rothschild, you know, I mean, so they have a lot of ties, a lot of people. I mean, that's really not that uncommon. And so Wexner was another guy that was working for Israeli intelligence, but was this huge oligarch. 
right? Um, one of the, well, he still is. He's like the richest person in Ohio. So she basically was like, well, Wexner is the head of the snake in, in America, right? But because, you know, the guardians of the Maxwell family are, are this other group, you know, who's really in charge of what's going on? I mean, it really is a global thing. And, you know, what's crazy is that you bring up the Rothschild family because of all this stuff people have said about them for years. But um, this is an Epstein victim, right, mm -hmm. who's credible and who's, who's like, you know, she said all this stuff in FBI reports that they won't release. They won't even give it to the victim's lawyers. They gave a heavily redacted version at one point, and she unredacted it because she remembered what she said. Right. But they they like don't want to they don't want to share this information. The FBI doesn't. They want to keep it all under wraps. I mean, it's just so crazy to think about. I mean, um, I don't know. People that are trying to tell me right now that we should be trusting the billionaires and they're going to keep us safe through this whole coronavirus thing. And, and they have our best interests at heart. Are you kidding me? Look at these billionaires right now that 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 did this and, and think they're getting away with it. And we're supposed to believe that they have our best interests in heart right now. Uh, no. So what can people do, Whitney? <clears throat> How can average people watching this, what can, what can they do? Well, um, you know, it's definitely true that solutions are harder to uh, offer than a diagnosis of the problem, right? Um, uh, I think the most important is um, to let yourself feel really mad. I think in the United States and a lot of other countries in the world, we have become so desensitized to stuff like this. Yeah. And into violence, into things like this. Do not let that happen to you. This is outrageous. Yeah. We cannot live in a world where this is excusable and where this is covered up. Um, one thing I would say, I don't want to get too political, but if you think voting for creepy rapist Joe Biden and creepy rapist Trump is going to solve the problem, you know, uh, honestly, if you are voting for either of those two men, and you know they're rapists, you are just propping up a broken system. Um, we should, I mean, this vote blue no matter who thing, it's insane. It's insane. I mean. It is insane, it is insane. It is literally, it is literally saying uh, this drug cartel that murders and rapes and poisons people and cuts people's head off is not as bad as the other drug cartel. It's, it's, it is a false choice. It is a false choice and you are propping up the system by voting with that false choice. You are giving that system power by supporting it. It's time people said, this is not working. Mm -hmm. I am not gonna vote for a rapist. I don't yeah. care if it's rapist on team red or rapist <laughs> on team blue. No, I mean, people have to draw the line at some point. No, you know what I mean? The vote any blue will do are literally, some of them have literally said, well, Biden is, le is less of the rapist. He's not as bad of a rapist. Like, less of a rapist, what? It's, it's, <laughs> it's madness. It is, it, is, it is madness. It is literally like, well, I mean, Ted, look Ted, what people are talking themselves into believing. Well, it's okay if he did a little rape. Right, oh yeah, just a little. Is, is that where we are? Yeah, that's how bad as it is. As a society? Yeah. Ted, Ted Bundy, uh, I'm voting for him because he didn't eat his victims like Jeffrey Dahmer. He just he just raped him and chopped him up. So he's not that much of a monster. It's literally that that, that I can't even I can't even listen. So yeah, I couldn't agree more. Like I tell people, some people are like I don't want to vote. I said actually, I think you should vote third party. Whoever you feel yeah, now vote and, third party, but don't vote for either of these two no. corrupt monster parties that are part of this whole system. Yeah, Republicans and Democrats of the establishment. Right, establishment, Republican, establishment, Democrat. They were involved in this stuff. Since they were doing this to kids. I mean, Bill you, Richardson, Bill Clinton on the Democrat side, Republicans, Dem Dennis Hastert, former Republican Speaker of the House. He got like charged and found guilty in court of, of raping a, a child. And, and these people have never been held accountable in a real way. Ever. And so they think they can keep getting away with it. That has to stop. People have to start drawing the line and it starts with you resisting the desensitization to this crap and you being angry and saying, screw this. Yeah. Screw this. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, well, Whitney, thank you so much for, for letting me know about this and for doing this work. Cause I know it's, I know it's not easy. You and I have talked a little bit about it. Um, just the emotional toll it takes to cover this stuff. You know, like how, how are you doing with this? emotionally covering this and having this conversation with Maria. Well, so Maria is like such an inspiring human being. She is so nice. Um, but right now she has, she has brain cancer. 
She says it's because of all of the stress and, and the fear that she's gone through. Um, I just, um, I don't know. I am just so upset that someone so nice, you know, I was, I was like telling her some personal stuff about like why I hadn't gotten in touch with her sooner and all this stuff. And she was like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, she was so empathetic, you know, and she's been through things that I can't even imagine living through, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, what a beautiful person, you know, and just like, well, another thing she told me, these people didn't just go after any preteen or, 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 you know, young girl. They went after the ones that they asked about grades. They wanted smart girls. They wanted talented, creative girls. She said that when all this happened to her, she was had a, a great career in front of her. She was, you know, already being really successful with art in, in New York City and, and had a great career ahead of her. And then after this happened, she couldn't touch anything artistic, any sort of tool at all for 20 years. Yeah. I mean, just think of the lives these people have destroyed. These are just a couple examples. So, um, you know, I had tried to deal um, in a lot of my series, a lot of the historical stuff. Um, but it's not really till you talk to someone who lived through this that you realize the enormity of this evil. And, and how important it is we have to stop it. Um, I think, honestly, we have to start, I guess, from the bottom up with accountability. And I think we should we should really go after Vicki Ward. We should be like, you do not deserve these awards. Mm-hmm. Look at what you've done and, and be responsible. At least, you know, her, because she's in media, you know, the court of a public opinion affects her. So, yeah. I mean, we can start there. Yeah, I like that. And just keeping the pressure on, um, the FBI, what, why haven't you prosecuted Jalen Maxwell? Like, and just being kind of relentless. And like I've said on social media and in this show, and you've said it, like, I'm not voting for the lesser of two rapists. I, I don't, you know, no. and I don't, and YouTube is, YouTube is trying to flag me on community guidelines and stuff like that. I, you know, I, I don't give a shit. I'm, I'm, um, so, um, all right, Whitney, well, thank you. Um, for this, uh, and you know, uh, to Maria, if you're watching, you, you know, thank you for coming forward and being, you know, Virginia Roberts and all those women coming forward. They're they're like heroes, and we're really st- the mask is coming off on the evil ruling class. Les Wexner, I mean, Jalene Maxwell, Vicky Ward. I mean, the names I keep hearing pop. Naomi Campbell, I keep hearing them pop up. You know, Bill Clinton, Trump. They're all fucking soulless pieces of shit, and they go fuck themselves. Um, and they're fucking. I mean, horrible the, these victims uh, of these people are so brave. I mean, after this ruling, the gloves have to come off. We cannot fail these women. Everyone else has failed them. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's people like you and me. There's the people watching who actually care and know this is sick. I mean, we have to be the ones that that help them and help them get their story out. Yeah. And help and help make a real call for justice. Because, I mean, what, it's 2020? I mean, these people knew this in 1996, and they've been sitting on it this whole time? Mm-hmm. I mean, I am just so outraged. I thought I knew so much about this case. No, I didn't, because they covered it up. They're all a bunch of cowards. Yeah, they're all cowards. They're either bought and paid for, or they just acquiesce, or they self-censor because they know it's, it'll help their career, or they're in on it, or they're actually a part of this. They are, they are pedophile sex traffickers themselves. Some, some version, one of those answers is, is, is in there. Um, well, Whitney, thank you so much. Where can people follow your work? And I know you, you um, have an interview that you just did that, where these phone calls are actually played that people can listen to. Right. Where can people find that? Okay, so right now all my written work, because uh, I, I don't really do, I do some interviews, but I don't have my own YouTube channel or anything. So I, all my written work you can find at thelastamericanvagabond.com. And at the Last American Vagabond YouTube channel, uh, there you will find um, a show I did with Ryan Christian, who's the head of The Last American Vagabond. And we play um, a couple clips from this audio recording that backs up some of the stuff that I went over. Um, it's much more impactful Uh, I would say to hear it straight from her Mm. than to hear it from me, you know, to hear it from someone who's lived it and who's tried to get the word out. You know, I'm just trying to tell her story because I, I, I can't believe that other people have not told it. Um, I am just so disgusted, um, that other people would not be willing to advocate for this woman, but you know, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And you can find that video there. There's recordings. I'll be releasing more recordings. 
Um, because honestly, with this new ruling, letting these people walk free, I mean, the gloves are off. It's time to expose these people for what they've really been doing and get what victims know, what the eyewitness testimony that they've been trying to cover up. It's time to get it out there. Yeah. People need to know. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Whitney. And where can people follow you online? Oh, um, well, Facebook doesn't let me post anything. I hit the post <laughs> button and it says, you are abusing this feature. And it's been like that for like a year and a half. I haven't posted in a year and a half. And they says I, ab I abuse the posting feature. It's kind of funny. So I just gave up. So I I'm on Twitter. You can follow me at underscore Whitney Webb. Um, I'm also on Mastodon, which is like a Twitter backup in case I get deplatformed. I'm Whitney Webb, no spaces on that on that site. All right, well, uh, follow Whitney, everybody, and uh, go watch that uh, that that YouTube on the last American Vagabond. Um, and again, uh, when when I get the audio clips of uh, the the phone call with Maria Farmer, I will do a separate video on that. Thank you, everybody, to watching. Um, you are all involved. You are all political vigilantes, and you are the ones that will help keep this story. Uh, from getting covered up, which is what they want. So thank you so much for watching. Um, fuck the ruling class. Shave your <laughs> knuckles for justice. Hey, everybody. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification button and the subscribe button, even if you've done it before because they're unsubscribing, many of you, every day. Watch the ads all the way through. If you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Also, support us at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Rockfin.com is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. All my videos are on Rockfin ad free. Thanks for watching.